some kangaroos, which we didn't do today, but you can imagine that the kangaroo, there's lots of bouncing. And, um, I'm Esther, and this workshop explores bouncing. making musical stories with children in early years. We're kicking things off with a look at how we can use existing content as a starting point to build a story in song. Um, so obviously using books that have some sort of repetition um, is a really good way of doing it, but then not being stuck to the book. The book Monkey and Me by Emily Gravitz gives us a great hook for developing a musical journey, including all kinds of animals. So are you going to come on a journey with me? That's the big question. Who's coming on a journey? The benefit of simple repetition in the main body of the song means you can explore the delivery in a way that really brings the story to life and makes it memorable. And if anybody sees anything interesting, please tell me. The important thing to remember is that the discoveries you make on the journey are not set in stone and whatever you discover can inspire the sounds you build into your song. Monkey and me. One of the other great things about this approach is that you're making it physical, getting the children actively involved and giving them some freedom of choice in exploring the space, whether that's in a nursery, a classroom or outdoors. Can we all stand like that? We're going to walk like penguins? Go on then, show us. Like this. Okay. The penguin is like grey. The penguin is red. The penguin is red. The penguin goes caca! It's useful to use a method of introducing a song which clearly shows everyone when to start, as well as indicating pulse and even pitch. Are you ready? Off we go. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Keep going. So once Monkey and me has been on a few journeys to see his animal friends, he uh, gets a bit tired and there's often a cue for a little song like Twinkle Twinkle, particularly when uh, uh, Ruth so brilliantly says, yes, we're going to lie on the floor like bats. Props are always a good idea. My monkey hot water bottle cover came in handy for this one. And the penguin to come and see somebody else who is over here. Oh, who is this? We found the elephant. And how does the elephant move? What does he do? He we did some of this stomp. stomp. Brilliant. How many stomps? What you do? find is that in developing your story, big, you can naturally introduce many of the formal rudiments of music. Yeah. Things like dynamics, expression, tempo, Ooh. and texture. Oh, fantastic. And where's the bat? Where is our bat? Can you show us the bat again? Now, my big thing about music and stories is quite often it becomes like uh, doing crazy sound effects like you would have in a horror film. So the door opens and so you're going through a book and that's what sort of happens. So I'm giving you a real composition exercise. In this next section, we're looking at storytelling and instruments, engaging children in the idea of ensemble playing, developing the listening and joining in that that involves. We're using a book called The Fish Who Could Wish by John Bush and Corky Paul as our inspiration. I should say that what we're doing in this practitioner workshop isn't how I would work with children, but the principles are basically the same. It's about developing a framework according to the age and stage of the children you're working with. I normally start by showing children a picture and asking them to pick three things that they liked about it. They then pick some instruments and sounds and create music to go with the three things that they like. The next step is to fit the three elements together in any way they like, layered, overlapping or in sequence. I ask them to make the beginning and the end of their piece really clear. Then they perform their music. In this instance, as one group finished their part, the storytelling passed automatically to the next group.
You can use different techniques in your setting to reinforce the ensemble experience, recording and playing back the music, or maybe sequencing it with pictures the children have drawn. And remember, you don't have to do everything in one session. what it is they wrote this story and I said oh why don't you tell us a story about Pedro and the dragon and the story went once upon a time um, the dragon this final the section dragon. featuring Pedro and the dragon combines what we've looked at in the previous two activities it uses the free flow model to guide children in inventing their own dragon story and music discussion then then they wrote it down and um, this was a reception girl she was particularly good at writing so she wrote the story down and then I asked them if we could devise a song I had a marimba player with me, which was obviously joyous. But equally, she, all she was doing really was just setting a pulse. Bum, 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 which you could do on a xylophone or a drum, whatever it happens to be. Ready, steady, off we go. Once upon a time, the dragon was in the story. The dragon is naughty. Stealing the bike. Once upon a time, the dragon set fire to the bike. So we recorded them singing their dragon song, and they sang it to me pretty much every time I came into the classroom. Returning to familiar songs is something we all love to do, but it doesn't have to be Twinkle Twinkle or Bob the Builder. The songs children create themselves can be just as memorable, and the fact they're personal to the child can make them much more inspirational for future music making. I sent it to the teacher and she played it back to them. But my daughter, like all three-year-olds, is completely obsessed with my phone, and when I'm trying to do something else, yeah, just have a look at the videos on my phone, darling, that's fine. So she loves watching the um, dragon song. And this is not set up at all. I've just gone to do the shopping. Once upon a time, the dragon was going. He was naughty. He was, he was, he, he saw things. 
he was stealing the bike. When they climbed the dragon, um, fire to the bike. <gasps> Naughty dragon. Off we go, Beth. Use a story with strong visuals as your starting point. We're taking children's own ideas and using them musically. We can naturally introduce some of the formal rudiments of music using prompting questions to engage children. Is the elephant a loud elephant? Is he slow? Don't be scared to get the instruments out, explain them and what they can do. Really listening to ideas and engaging with children will give you great material to work with. Brilliant, press stop.